Hello and welcome to this week's Watercolor Wednesday. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be continuing our composition month, and I'm going to be painting this circle composition from my uh, Fresh Flower Compositions guide. And I've left a link in the description below, and you can purchase this alone, or it does come with my composition online course that talks all about flower compositions. So we're going to get started, and I've got my uh, Arches cold press paper, I've got a pencil, my size 10, size 2, and size 0 round brushes, and then just a variety of paint colors and brands. So to get started, I wanted to talk really quick about how I decided what size of brush to use because sometimes I know that can be confusing. Um, you want to choose a size that will lend itself well to what you're painting. And because I've got a lot of flowers going on, I know I'm going to want a slightly smaller brush because if I have a really large brush, it might be harder to get some of the details in with all the flowers I'm going to be painting. We are going to be painting this as is, and in the guide, I do have everything labeled. So if you want to switch things out, you can say, okay, this is a focal flower. So what other focal flower can I put there instead? And that's kind of a, a helpful way to use this guide as well. And if you missed last week, I've also linked to that in the description box where we used the composition, the flesh fla fresh flower compositions, I cannot talk today, with the flower pairing guide. And really quick, let me show you. So the flower pairing guide has focal flowers and then greenery and filler flowers for many, many different flowers. So you can kind of plug these in. Okay, but with all that out of, out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. And I grabbed my pencil just so I could draw a circle so I can kind of see where I need to stay within. And I'm just kind of lightly draw kind of a large circle. You know it's hard to see because I wasn't really pressing down. I just want a, a slight guide here. And then I like to start with my focal flowers. So I'm going to start with this peony. The, or the dahlia right here, the sunflowers. And I am going to use roughly the same colors. So this is cadmium yellow. And I say roughly the same colors because it is fall and so I think instead of having such a bright summery palette like what is happening here, I'm going to lean towards a more fall palette, I guess. <laughs> so, and this is just a guide. So I'm not going to try and paint this photorealistically. I'm just going to try and use this as a, a jumping off point to know how to place my flowers. And I'm first just placing the outer petals, which I don't normally do when I when I paint peonies, but in this case where I'm trying to block off an area, yeah, I'm going to do the outer petals first. And I know it looks like a blob right now, but if you've painted with me before, you know that we'll go back in and add more details later and it'll all kind of come together. So now I want to get the sunflower in place. And I'm really utilizing the shape of my round brush here. I'm just kind of pressing down and using that shape to create the petals. Okay, 
Okay, my other sunflower is roughly over here. So I'm going to put that in. And it's kind of facing a different way, so that's why I'm kind of bringing the petals out this way, and then when they get over to this side, they look a little more parallel instead of coming out like this and keeping them in the line like that. And remember, if you have any questions, to please ask them, and then I'll get to them toward the end. Okay, now that I've got those in place, I'm going to place this larger dahlia. And I want this to be a slightly different color because I've already got a lot of this yellow happening. Okay, and then let's look at this again. I've got a rose here and a rose here. So I'm kind of working big to small here. And we've filled in these. And now we're going to do this kind of triangle next. This uh, hydrangea and then these two. And the beauty of this is if I don't feel like painting a hydrangea, I can swap it out. I am going to paint one just because it's here, but don't feel like you have to be stuck with what's here. So here I've got a rose. And by a rose, I mean, that is definitely not a rose. That's a peony. <laughs> And then this is a garden rose down here, which I am going to paint quite a bit softer, but not quite as light as it is in the picture. Today has just been one of those days. I don't know. I'm sure you've had days like this. Everybody has, but I was just like pulling teeth to get my child out of bed, get him dressed and ready for preschool. And I was really, really tempted to just not show up today, but I'm glad that I'm here because now that I'm painting, it just, I feel so much better. So that is a testament to what painting can do. If you're having a bad day, just pull out your paints and just have fun and, and just feel better. Okay, now I've got a little daisy here tucked in the middle, which this I did not leave quite enough space for, but that's okay. I'm going to paint these other flowers now.
So with this, I am not painting every single petal. I'm just kind of filling it in a little bit so that you can kind of get an idea for the shape. And that's kind of my approach to white flowers too, is I don't paint everything. I just kind of paint the shadows. Okay, now is kind of what I think is the fun part. <laughs> I love adding in the leaves and just rounding everything out. And I know I've got these little tiny daisies. I'm kind of waiting until I place some leaves to put those in where there are still some gaps. So I'm gonna place these larger leaves and just kind of round everything out so it creates that circle composition. And we'll just go from there. That's where I'm I'm heading next. You always know when <laughs> when I'm kind of in the zone, when I'm not chatting as much. I'm just kind of enjoying myself right now. And I forget to talk through what I'm doing when that happens, so I apologize. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to kind of take some creative liberties. I've got these little sprigs kind of all the way around, but I've changed the color and I'm also just going to add them in in a couple extra places where I feel like I need this same color. So I am going to add it in here in place of that little daisy. I'm just going to add in a little sprig right here. And then just one more up here. I believe it's next week I'm going to be giving you tips for balancing color in your composition. So we're continuing the composition month and next week is going to be all about color in the composition which is one of my favorite favorite things to talk about. I love love color. I love mixing color. I love looking for little color nuances. Next time you are outside, 
pay attention to the leaves that you see on any shrubs or trees and look for little color changes. Not every leaf is all one color. In fact, I'm going to add in just a touch of this pink to these leaves. That's just going to give them a little more character and make them look a little more natural, even though I know it feels really weird to add pink onto leaves, but part of this is that the leaf is has changed itself and part of it is that the light is reflecting some of these flowers. And I do talk about this in the composition course. I get a little bit nerdy with color. <laughs> so if you like that and you, you want to learn more about kind of why I choose certain colors and, and how to get a more realistic feel, you might enjoy the course. So now I'm just kind of filling in and I do want to leave space for those tiny daisies that we talked about too. And I'm trying to uh, change up the shape of my leaves as I go. I don't want every leaf to be exactly the same shape. That just adds a little bit of interest. All right, let's go back in and add in just a couple little daisies here. And I'm going to use raw umber violet for these, which might feel like a weird choice, but I just feel like using it because it's one of my favorite colors. It's like a deep plum almost. I love, love it. Well, not every little gap has to be filled in, but I do like adding just this little bit of texture this way. Okay, now that our main composition is filled in, this is the other fun part where we get to go back in and add an extra layer and start bringing some of this to life. So I'm going to start by adding the centers of my sunflowers. And I'm using raw umber violet again. I'm also going to add the center of this dahlia. Let me show you again. So this is kind of where the inspiration has come from. And it's similar, really similar, but I've taken my own spin on it. And you thought I wasn't going to use opera rose. <laughs> I'm just in, I'm still in love with opera rose. I can't help it. I just have to add it in as often as I can. 
I know I said I wasn't going to do a bright, summery color palette, but sometimes you just need to brighten things up a little bit. Okay. I love Opera Rose. It's just like this, it's almost neon. It's so vibrant and I love it. I love the little cheerful pop it brings to any painting. I'm just curious if anyone has started just using the colors that are already mixed on their palette, or if you rinse off your palette every time. I'm curious. I definitely used to rinse off my palette way more often, and the more I've painted, the more I just, I like the it's part laziness that I don't want to remix colors that I know I like <laughs> and part I like the new new color options that kind of pop up when I mix some more color. You always start new. Yeah, I totally get that. So this paint right here that's on my palette, and it's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, it's very pigmented because this is gouache. And I'm going to use this in my sunflower right here. And gouache, if you're new to that term, is there. A couple different types of gouache. There's acrylic gouache, which is more like an acrylic paint, or there's this uh, water-based gouache that I'm using. It's more like an opaque watercolor paint. And I bought a set of gouache paints and I've been wanting to learn a little bit more. And in the future, like we have a composition month in November this year, but I am going to have a gouache month next year. I'm really, really excited about that. Kind of dive in and do some projects with gouache and show how to do that. I'll have a gouache workshop too. So speaking of workshops, I've kind of mixed up how uh, I'm doing things. And every month, I'm going to be hosting a virtual workshop. And this month, it is next Saturday, so the 20th, and you can attend live or you can just purchase the workshop and then watch the replay when you have a chance. And you will have lifetime access, so if you don't have time right now, or even if you want to watch it next year and you know do a refresh every year, you can totally do that. Um, anyway, this, this month's workshop is going to be Christmas cards and I'll be painting four different designs of Christmas cards. And then there will be a bonus lesson that you can watch on your own time that will show how to digitize your cards so that you can 
make one and then digitize it and print it and send those out. And it saves a lot of time. And you can also apply that and do that on something like this where it's a painting and you want to turn this into cards or something like that. So it's going to be a really fun workshop. I'm excited about it. And then next month, I believe we're painting a queen set of okay, which would be really beautiful for Christmas. So if you'd like to sign up for that, I did include a link down below so you can get in there. Oh, and if you're not on my newsletter, I, I send it out every week to remind you about what Watercolor Wednesday is for that week. And last week I sent out a quarterly email and I'll be announcing the giveaway winner in today's email, so that'll be fun. Every quarter I will give away a $25 gift card to Blick, which is where I purchase a lot of my watercolor supplies. In fact, like I would say 99% of my supplies come from Blick. Okay, this is coming together and I'm almost finished. I'm just adding these details to my leaves. And then I'm gonna take one more look and make sure it all feels good before I call it done. And sometimes it helps to take a picture of your painting, especially if you're sitting close to it like I am right now. If you're sitting close to your painting, sometimes it's hard to see what it still needs. So you can take a photo if you don't want to hold it up, because especially with watercolor, you don't want to hold it up and have everything start running down the paper. That would be bad. So my trick is to take a photo and you can really see where things are lacking, where you're missing some little gaps. I have my, my screen here off to the side where I can see what you are seeing. And so I'm seeing right here, there's not enough contrast between these two flowers. And I really want one of them to pop. And I think it's going to be this rose. So I'm gonna go in with my deep scarlet, and I know we started with that kind of white rose, but all of my compositions lately tend to end up a little moody, which I'm fine with. And I just want to make this rose stand out quite a bit more. And then I'm going to go in with my alizarin crimson here in the center. And I might even include some raw umber violet to darken that up quite a bit. Okay, that feels much better. Now there's a definite difference between these two. And then up here, 
this is feeling a little bit too light. I want a little more depth with my daisies. So I'm just going in with a really soft kind of red color that was a little too dark, but it's all good. Sometimes things turn out way moodier than you're expecting, and it's okay. <laughs> At least for me, they do. I just love adding more depth and more color. Okay, I think I'm going to call that done. Yeah. I'm going to call it done. <laughs> so here's where we started. And then here's where we ended up. I really do like this circle composition. And I lied when I said I was done. I'm going to add just a little bit of dark green here. Uh, I love the circle composition. This would be really fun to digitize and then write, you know, happy birthday or something underneath it in calligraphy. You could shrink this down when you digitize it and put it on a card. You can shrink it down and just put it on a print, especially because there's not a ton of room, <clears throat> excuse me, on either side of this. And so the beauty of digitizing is, is you can kind of manipulate, manipulate the size and make it fit and center it too, which is nice. All right, there you go. Thank you so much. And I will stick around for just one more minute to answer any questions before I end this video. And I will see you next week. Same time, same place. All right, I hope you have a beautiful Wednesday and I will see you next week.